Okay, today I'm going to document the uh, fitting of the Ram Air Industries um, foam high flow filter system to my Triumph Rocket Roadster. Uh, I'm going to try and do it step by step, a uh, little bit of video here and there, so that we can uh, see how easy it is to follow the instructions. First of all, let's look at what comes in the box. Okay, I've laid it out here. First of all, obviously, a replacement foam filter. There's a replacement wiring harness for the IAT sensor. The three clips for holding the air filter on. There's also a rubber washer, a P-clip, a, a crankcase breather and a clip for that. There's a nylon wa uh, lock nut. Uh, it comes in the kit along with this rubber washer and two sets of transfers. There's uh, two white and two black transfers along with a very, very extensive uh, instruction manual on how to do it. And it's not only very detailed instructions, but as you look through it, there's a, obviously very detailed photographs, page by page, step by step with actual photographs of how to do this. I ordered it from Ram Industries in the United Kingdom. I live in Tulsa. And it arrived by mail and uh, I just applied for the standard shipping. It took about a week, maybe maybe 10 days to arrive. It was shipped by British uh, airmail and arrived just by the, the normal uh, United States Postal Service, just delivered it to the door. It took about a week to 10 days and that's exactly what was in the box. The instructions suggest that the bike should be on a shop stand to keep it level and it should be easier to complete the task like that. It does say in the instructions that if you don't have a shop stand that you can just do it with it resting on the side stand but it's not as easy to do it just for ease of visibility on the left side of the bike it's better if the bike is upright. I didn't have a shop stand so I improvised and all I've done is basically stood the bike upright, propped it up with two sets of four by twos, one on either, two on either side, underneath the rail where the foot pegs are mounted, and the bike is sitting there quite nicely, just propped upright, it's not gonna fall over, it's not gonna go anywhere. So that's how I'm gonna perform the task. Obviously, the replacement filter is gonna go underneath here, underneath the bear claw, and it's going to facilitate the removal of all of the air filter ducting under there and the actual main air filter which is in the box underneath the seat. So obviously we'll get to do that in a moment or two. Okay, the first instruction says remove the seat. Now I'm sure everybody has already done that before. But anyway, just in case anyone hasn't removed the seat on their rocket yet, down here there's a key slot. You just take your normal ignition key Place it in the slot, give it a twist, and up will come the seat. Once the seat is removed, obviously that gives um, access now to the tool storage here. And for those of anyone that hasn't lifted the seat off before, the uh, tools are located in a handy little removable box here. Once you remove the tools, you can get access to the battery down here. And that's the air filter box with the uh, standard OEM air filter. That's um, the filter is what we're going to re remove and replace it with the filter underneath the bear claw. The next task is to remove the intake cover or the bear claw. There's uh, two bolts holding that on, M6 bolts. Uh, one is located here at the front by the forks. The second bolt is located underneath here at the rear. Once those bolts have been removed, the cover should lift away from the motorcycle. Okay, the next step then is to raise the tank. Now the instructions quite clearly say that if it's a uh, older model, you may have to release the gauges and lift them slightly up out of the way. On newer models, it says the clamp will uh, miss the gauges. And uh, what we have to do is undo this Allen key here. It's a five millimeter Allen key. And again, in the instructions, they're quite specific. They say you should use a long Allen key on an extension. Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna make it easier to do. Keep you away from tanks. So Allen key on the end of an extension. Remove that, and then the tank should be able to swivel up out of the way. 
Okay, so that's the bolt removed. Now obviously the tank should just hinge up. It's pivoted at the rear here. Now when I first got the bike, I was wondering what it was, but underneath, I don't know if you can see it here, there's a steel bar here. Now I was wondering what that bar was for, as it does actually, you can remove it from the bike and it just comes off. So I didn't know what it was for, but now I do. Obviously when you lift the tank up, it becomes the stay that's going to hold the tank in the upright position. Right, so that's the next step completed. The tank stay, which is located underneath the edge of the tank here, was removed. The uh, steel end of it was placed into the hole on the frame on the fork top. And the other end, which has a plastic knuckle on it, was placed up in the tank holder up here. Now, as you can see, that now supports the tank. Oh, got the dog in the background as well, but anyway, supports the tank and gives you access now to the various elements on top of the engine here, which we're going to have to be manipulating and removing. Okay, the next step is to locate the IAT sensor from the air duct and the wiring harness. So this is here, so we're going to remove the wiring harness and the sensor, remove it from this ducting here, which is the air intake ducting that goes up towards the air box up here. The wiring harness itself is removed quite simply. There's a little clip here on the top of the sensor. Basically press the clip down with your thumb and the push backwards and then the wiring harness is removed. Put that to one side. The sensor itself, it pulls out of the duct here. Again, uh, despite it has a hexagonal thing, it's quite clear, it says in the instructions, it's just a rubber grommet, it does not screw in there, it just pushes in, it's a tight fit. So we're going to just pull it out, but be careful not to damage the sensor, the bulb sensor on the end of it as you do so. Okay, that's the IAT sensor removed, and as I said in the instructions, it just pulls out from the rubber grommet. You can see the grommet itself is still here and in place. Um, I just removed it, be careful not to damage the bulb on the end, which is the the actual sensor part, we're going to put it to one side and keep that safe. The next step is to remove the plenum fixing screws. They're very deeply buried and very difficult to get at. Again, they're five millimeter hexagonal heads. Uh, there's one located at the end of this screwdriver down here. You can just see it on the tip of the screwdriver there. And the second one is located behind the fuel rail, behind the fuel delivery pipe here. And you can see that again, it's just visible if I lift the pipe up out of the way down there. When you remove those two, that will facilitate removal of this, the air box or plenum part up the top here. And that should help once you remove the clamps off the throttle bodies, that should be able to be removed. The instructions again, very specific. They say that if you drop those two screws with the associated washers, they will fall down behind the oil tank and be very, very difficult to remove because they'll fall down between the engine and the oil tank. And they say they are very difficult, if not impossible, to remove without getting the oil tank off to uh, retrieve them. So they suggest stuffing the gap between the oil tank and the engine with cloths, just so that if they do fall, then they're gonna fall onto the cloth and they'll be easier to remove and they won't go all the way down. So that's exactly what I've done on this side of the bucket. Again, I'm getting at those plenum screws down here. I've already removed the one on the right, so this is the one on this side, the left side now. Again, just using an Allen. I use the Allen wrench with a socket on the end, and it's in there. Once I get it nearly almost out, then I'm obviously gonna get my, my fingers in there to try and make sure I don't drop that uh, bolt and the washer. Now, on the other side, I managed to get the bolt out. I did drop the washer. I'm not quite sure where it went just yet but I'm going to have a good look for that in a moment. I did manage to remove both the bolts, uh, the one on this side, the front one. I did get the bolt, but I just dropped the washer. I haven't found it just yet. The one on the second one here behind the wiring. Again, that's one up here. I managed to get the, the, the uh, bolt and the washer out on that one without dropping anything. I managed to squeeze my fingers in there. Well, I've been at these intake screws now for about 10 minutes. They're easy to see. One's right there, look. Okay, and the second one is straight back here. 
but they are an absolute bitch to get the Allen key on. I mean, to get anywhere close enough with your head and your hands in there to see what you're doing, you obliterate the light and you can't see what's going. When you do get the Allen key on, there's literally no movement left or right to put anything on the thread and actually move it. Couldn't get at them at the moment, so uh, best thing to do rather than lose my temper when all else fails is relax, chill out, step away from the bike for a moment and have a beer. And then we'll have another go at it in a moment. Here's a top tip. If you're struggling with your Allen key and you're not having, uh, you're wondering whether you've got the right size or not, and it's difficult to get it in there, it's very difficult to see and maneuver it in there, and you can't really see whether you're getting it located in the, in the hex head, then if you want to make sure that you've got the right size Allen key, then this end of the uh, air intake duct, there's another, another screw which is identical to the ones that you're trying to get out underneath. So if it works on this one, then obviously you've got the right size. It's just a bitch to get in there. Okay, after much fiddling and a relaxing beer and managing to get the nuts cracked off, I was able to get a, a set of needle nose pliers in there. And there is a knurled end to the, the bolt itself. And I was able, once, once I got them cracked off, I was able to get the, the needle nose pliers in there, grab a hold of the knurled end of the bolt, and just work it backwards and forwards a little bit and was able to slacken it off sufficiently to get them the clamps removed. Next on the agenda is underneath the plenum, which is this box here, and the three clamps here, here, and here, which hold this unit onto the throttle body. So they're the next clamps to be slackened off. So again, they're three millimeter hexagonal heads and exactly the same size as the other two that I've just undone on the inside. So slacken those off and be ready to remove the box. All right, so that's that removed. Then that's all the clamps loosened here. The three clamps on the throttle bodies, the two clamps up here, which link the plenum here to the intake duct. Okay, so everything's loose. The instructions now say you basically hold it here and here and pulling outwards and upwards with a slight bias to the rear end here, pulling this end out slightly more and lifting upwards and gently ease it off the throttle bodies and ease it off of the intake duct behind here. Again, it says in the instructions to use a bit of patience, don't force it and just gently ease it off. So we'll see how that goes. Well, that was easy and as advertised, just holding it front and back, eased it gently upwards and outwards with a little bit of extra pressure on the rear end here. And again, it came off the throttle bodies, no problem at all. And you can see the ducting here. Now you can see the, the bolt here. And the other one is up behind this tube, which I was having trouble with getting off earlier on. But now that's the, the plenum removed and the throttle bodies are completely exposed. The next step then is to remove the uh, ends here, the clamps from the ends of the intake ducts underneath the frame here. I've taken the precaution here, I mean I've filled the throttle bodies up here with some shop cloth just to make sure that if anything, if I drop anything, like washers, bolts or anything else, that nothing falls down the throttle bodies. So that's just for my own peace of mind, they don't suggest or say that anywhere in the instructions. I just thought that might be a, uh, a wise decision to make at this moment in time. So I'm just going to reach in here and we'll see if we can, the clips on the top there, the clamps. So basically just remove the clamp and then I just pulled the, wash, the rubber grommet off the end there on that first intake. On the second intake up here, it might be a bit tough, I don't think I slackened it quite as much, but I get up underneath here, you can see that, just ease that off of there. That's the clamp off, and we'll pull that rubber ring off there as well. The gasket, if I can get it. Okay, I've got my fingers in behind it. There it is, that coming out. So that's now the, the gaskets removed from the air intake duct. Now eventually, I will remove the duct completely from the top because obviously once I fit the, the ram air system to the front here 
the air ducting underneath the tank there becomes completely irrelevant and it'll make uh, maintenance in the future and getting to the top of the the engine and things like that it'll make that a lot easier in the future if this redundant ducting is completely removed and again from this side now from the top side you can clearly see this is the air ducting that goes up through this uh, flexible pipe here and it runs back into the air box back here at the back of the seat again this will be removed eventually the grid on the top will be removed the air filter inside will be removed because all of that has been replaced by the ram air system as we saw the ducting that was easy enough to remove once the ducting was out you can see now that there's uh, more access to the top of the engine the air hose which runs back to the cleaner again there's a clamp at the bottom end of the air hose down the bottom down here if you slacken that off a little bit and once it's slackened off you can grab hold of the air hose it'll pull clear that's it absolutely no problem getting that off and you can see down there that the hole where that came from and if we go around the other side of that hole and there's four bolts here one two three and one in this corner four i'm going to remove those take this top off and remove the air cleaner itself from inside the air cleaner box once the four screws will be removed from the corners, it's simply a case of lifting off the lid, reaching in, grab and hold the air filter itself, and remove that and set it to one side. Now, as I said before, all of those components are now redundant. So this big box that used to house the air filter is now a big empty box. And obviously it becomes some handy dandy under seat storage for gloves or whatever else you need to stuff in there, waterproofs or whatever. All right, so the next step then is to take the extension wiring harness for the IAT sensor and connect that and route it to where it needs to go. So basically it's gonna connect back onto where I removed the old one. So that's the plug there. So I'm gonna connect it into this plug here. Then it's gonna route across the top of the engine block here under the fuel rail through this gap here and you can see out through where you can see daylight out through that gap that should bring it out on the other side um, in between the center and the rear throttle bodies in such a position that it's ready to locate onto the new ram air filter casing when that's installed okay that's the iat extension cable installed then it's there plugged on it's just routed across here and uh, it goes out through the gap here towards the throttle body. So the only other thing to do under here at this moment in time is the map sensor, which is this item here. That was secured to the ducting and it was on the ducting bolt that held it on there and now it's flopping around. So in the kit that Ram Air Industries supply, they supply you with this P-clamp and a nylon nut. So the P-clamp and the nylon nut and what they do is you basically place the P-clamp around the fuel rail, put the bolt through the map sensor, and using the original bolt and the supplied nylon nut, you then secure the map sensor to the fuel rail using this P-clip. All right, so now the, IA, the IAT extension cable is connected. It's running down here, out between the center and the rear throttle bodies underneath the fuel rail. So that's in position. The map sensor has been secured using the supplied P-clip and the nylon nut to the original bolt and connecting that to the fuel rail instead of the um, housing for the air duct. The next part again, this is another optional thing which I'm doing, which is, um, and they provide the, the stuff for it in the kit, is to remove the crankcase breather tube and connect their supplied crankcase breather. Again, on the side of the engine, this is the right side of the engine, just behind the manifold, there's an infill plate held on with two bolts. We're going to remove those two bolts, remove this infill plate, and that should give us access to the crankcase breather. Once located at the rear of the engine, this is a crankcase breather tube here. It's just a case now of prying that off. And uh, as the instructions say, it's not it's just a breather tube. They're going to put their new foam breather on the top of that. And uh, you can leave that breather tube 
in, in place, in position, just not connected. And uh, then if you ever want to remove the RAM air system and go back to the standard setup, you won't have to fiddle around trying to get that pipe back into place because it'll already be there. You just remove the foam filter and place that one back on the spigot. Here you can see now that the, the breather pipe has been removed. Just removed it straight off the spigot here, I'm pointing it out. So I just pried it off with a flat screwdriver. You don't have to undo the clip according to their instructions and it was quite right. You just push it up with the flat screwdriver, remove it from the spigot and then get ready to install their foam filter that sits on top of the breather. This is the uh, breather that comes supplied with the kit and the uh, clamp. So just a case of putting the two together and fitting them on top of the spigot. The um, breather does have a protective film on it, which you can remove, a bit difficult to do one-handed, but basically you get the idea, you can remove the protective film. Once that's removed, place the clamp over the bottom of it, like so, and then install it on the back. Okay, well that's the crankcase breather installed there in that gap. Relatively simple job. Um, the only thing I'd say about that it is uh, rather tight quarters. If you've got big hands, it's going to be a bitch to get it in there. It was a bit of a bitch, took a bit of struggling. Um, kind of cause light helped, but we got it in there in the end. All right, so there it is, foam filter on top of the spigot, all nicely secured and ready to put the fillet plate back in. And then we can work on the ram air system itself on the other side. The next step is to take the original IAT sensor and the supplied spacer ring that comes with the kit and take that and install it into the back of the um, housing for the RAM air filter. If you see, I'm find a place where there's some light, you'll be able to see there, there's a, a hole. So we place a spacer ring over the thing and insert it into that hole and push it in tight. Okay, that's the, the OEM IAT sensor now installed into the housing. All that's left for me to do now, basically, is to take the, the three clamps that are supplied, place the clamps over the individual holes here, take this over to the motorcycle, connect the um, IET, IAT extension cable to the sensor, locate these onto the throttle bodies and tighten them down securely. Okay, I've placed the three clamps over the holes now what I'm basically going to do, I'm going to tighten them up a little bit so they hold on there. But I've placed two of them facing to the rear and the front one facing to the front. Just because I believe um, that's the same way as the original throttle body clamps were holding the air ducting on. And it makes it easier to access them with a screwdriver for tightening them up when it's finally fitted. Okay, that's the area. We've all cleaned up around the area there. And... Uh, I've made sure there's no um, washers, nothing dropped. And the one washer that was on this clamp here, uh, which I did drop, did actually fall down the back here. I've managed to retrieve that one. So there's nothing else, no foreign objects. So now the only thing that remains to do is to remove each one of the paper wads that I put in the throttle bodies, just to make sure that nothing fell down there. And then we're gonna offer up the filter and you can see if I if I zoom in a little bit here you can see now the between the center and the rear throttle body the IAT extension cable has come through that's going to connect up to the IAT sensor which is here on the new filter housing I've put the clamps on, they're all secure enough to hold them in place, but not too tight for the rubber. I'm gonna locate the harness, the wiring harness, and then insert them onto the throttle bodies themselves. All right, so that's the Ram Air housing and the new polymer foam filter all in place. And all it remains me to do now is tighten up the three clamps on the bottom there to hold it in place. Well, that's the Ram Air system now installed onto the motorcycle. You can see that under the tank, it's freed up an awful lot of space where all the ducting was 
and uh, so that makes it now easier to access the parts there. Um, eventually I intend to do a new exhaust system and I'm putting a Power Commander 5 onto the motorcycle so that would give me some access some space there basically to locate the Power Commander. Also what it's also done at the rear here it's freed up all the space underneath the seat where the airbox used to be and now that becomes basically a storage solution. I need to find some way of uh, blocking off the hole at the front where the hose came in obviously to keep water and moisture out of there. Now the only thing that remains to be done now obviously we need to lower the tank down and then follow the instructions um, as to how to set the system up. Before we do that we'll just go over here look on the, onto the bench over here and this is all the basic in the uh, stuff that was removed from the motorcycle over here on the bench we have the plenum the air ducting the hose the air filter the housing top all the clamps etc that go with it so all of that was removed from the motorcycle to make room for that new system the new ram air system that's on it at the moment now basically the instructions are quite specific they say that you should obviously lower the tank refit the seat and this is very important you should start the motorcycle but not use the throttle at all just push the button start start the motorcycle let the motorcycle idle for approximately 12 minutes and all that time during that 12 minute cycle you don't touch the throttle and you wait basically until the engine comes up to temperature and you'll know that by the fact that the fan at the front here on the radiator cowling the fan cycles once the fan cycles you leave the bike for a further 12 minutes again do not touch the throttle just let it idle for 12 minutes let it sort itself out let it do it let it do its own thing at the end of that 12 minutes you shut the bike down normally and things should be okay so that's what i'm going to do right now i'm going to clean up a little bit put the seat back on close up the back drop the tank back down and uh, run the motorcycle. Basically now the installation is complete. Um, I'm just going to run the motorcycle and I'm waiting. I've got everything else put back together, but I'm not going to put the, the bear claw and uh, cover back over the filter until such times as I've finished doing the setup run to make sure everything setting is running okay. So all that remains to do now is to start the motorcycle. And of course, because it's um, we're in the garage here, it's going to take at least 24 minutes according to the, the in setup instructions. So obviously, I'm going to go ahead and open the garage door, let some of the fumes out before I start the motorcycle. All right, so here we go with the startup then. Basically, following the instructions, it just says start the bike up normally. Okay, so the bike's now been running for the uh, required amount of time that the uh, instructions say. It was about 12 to 15 minutes to allow the engine to warm up to its operating temperature and uh, for the fan to kick in on the cooling fan. That happened and then we just left it to continue um, to run for another 12 minutes, the book says. So I left it for the, the 12 minutes before shutting it off and... Uh, all of that has to be done without touching the throttle at all. You basically have to start the, start the motorcycle um, without turning the throttle. Just push the button, let it start, and let it idle. Do not touch the throttle. Apparently, it's very important that you do not do that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start the bike, and then I'm going to try and hold the camera down here towards this angle, and we should be able to hear how... The difference in the you'll probably hear some induction roar from the throttle bodies there as it sucks the air in through the ram air filter okay obviously it's allowed to breathe a lot more freely now than it was so what i'm going to do again is go ahead and just start the bike so you turn the key on make sure it's in neutral only trouble is of course i only have one pair of hands two hands i need to pull the clutch on one side and press the start button on the other side so therefore i'm going to put the camera down Okay, so now the bike is running. I 
again. I'm going to hold the camera over this side here and uh, twist the formula a couple of times and we probably will sound to hear the difference in how freely the engine revs and it's going to, um, you'll probably hear some induction roar. There it goes up. Just to give you some idea of what the airflow used to have to do, obviously previously the air was drawn in underneath the seat here through these two inlets on either side of the seat. It ran down through the ducting in the seat into the air box down here. From the air box it went through the filter, obviously this big paper filter which I've now removed. It then went through the pipe, through this ducting, up over underneath the tank into this air duct which had two outlets on it and then from that air duct it flew it flowed into the plenum through those two ducts here and then out through the three holes at the top there into the three throttle bodies that are on the side of the engine there so by Replacing it with the ram air filter as I have done. I've eliminated all of that Now the air is sucked straight into the throttle bodies Straight here at the filter. It comes in from basically Every direction around the the filter it just sucks the air straight in and that's why it's obviously a lot freer revving now It should rev a lot quicker pull a lot stronger and by the time I fit the um the upgraded exhaust system and uh, also make a few changes to the fuel mapping by fitting the Power Commander 5 we should get a lot more power out of the bike it's currently or it, uh, currently it was stock just under 150 horsepower 168 foot-pounds of torque and um, what I'm going to do is when I finally get the exhaust system put on the Power Commander and have it remapped um, then I'm going to stick it on the dyno basically and uh, we'll see what kind of power increases we've gained on the bike from all of that work when we get to it. Reinstall my seat and then reinstall the cover that goes on the side of the tank here and obviously as you can see it's just a cover it's open all the way around so it's not going to restrict the airflow at all. Well, that's that little project completed. So all that really remains now is to uh, pick up the tools and put stuff away, etc. But uh, I hope that's helpful. I hope if anyone else is considering doing that, that uh, I looked online, I couldn't find a video that explained it or exactly step by step. The instructions that come from Ram Air are very, 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 um, informative and if you follow the instructions which is all I did basically follow those instructions to the letter there won't be a problem the the most difficult thing what I found was not actually following the directions it was a couple of the clamps are in hard to reach or hard to get at locations and the old fingers trying to get them in there trying to twist things around a bit that's the only problem I had was just getting my fingers into some of the spaces that were required to do the job. But it's done, it's over, and uh, I'm hopefully, can't wait now for the morning to come, hopefully it's uh, not too cold, and I get to get on the bike and give it a blast. It sounds awesome now, and that's before we even do any exhaust modifications, so once I done the, do some exhaust modifications and put a new exhaust system, a racing exhaust on it, it's going to make a big, big difference to the sound and the performance of the bike.